Eleonora by John Dryden, read for LibriVox.org by Peter Tucker. Eleonora, a panegyrical poem, dedicated to the memory of the late Countess of Abingdon. As when some great and gracious monarch dies, soft whispers first and mournful murmurs rise among the sad attendants, then the sound soon gathers voice and spreads the news around through town and country till the dreadful blast is blown to distant colonies at last who then perhaps were offering vows in vain for his long life and for his happy reign so slowly by degrees unwilling fame did matchless eleonora's fate proclaim till public as the loss the news became the nation felt it in the extremest parts with eyes o'erflowing and with bleeding hearts but most the poor whom daily she supplied beginning to be such but when she died for while she lived they slept in peace by night secure of bread as of returning light and with such firm dependence on the day that need grew pampered and forgot to pray so sure the dole so ready at their call they stood prepared to see the manna fall such multitude she fed she clothed she nursed that she herself might fear her wanting first of her five talents other five she made heaven that had largely given was largely paid and in few lives in wondrous few we find a fortune better fitted to the mind nor did her arms from ostentation fall or proud desire of praise the soul gave all unbribed it gave or if a bribe appear no less than heaven to heap huge treasures there want passed for merit at her open door heaven saw he safely might increase his poor and trust their sustenance with her so well as not to be a charge of miracle none could be needy whom she saw or knew all in the compass of her sphere she drew he who could touch her garment was as sure as the first christians of the apostles cure the distant herd by fame her pious deeds and laid her up for their extremest needs a future cordial for a fainting mind for what was ne'er refused all hoped to find each in his turn the rich might freely come as to a friend but to the poor twas home as to some holy house the afflicted came the hunger starved the naked and the lame want and diseases fled before her name for zeal like hers her servants were too slow she was the first where need required to go herself the foundress and attendant too sure she had guests sometimes to entertain guests in disguise of her great master's train her lord himself might come for aught we know since in a servant's form he lived below beneath her roof he might be pleased to stay or some benighted angel in his way might ease his wings and seeing heaven appear in its best work of mercy think it there where all the deeds of charity and love were in as constant method as above all carried on all of a piece with theirs as free her arms as diligent her cares as loud her praises and as warm her prayers yet was she not profuse but feared to waste and wisely managed that the stock might last that all might be supplied and she not grieve when crowds appeared she had not to relieve which to prevent she still increased her store laid up and spared that she might give the more so pharaoh or some greater king than he provided for the seventh necessity taught from above his magazines to frame that famine was prevented ere it came thus heaven though all-sufficient shows a thrift in his economy and bounds his gift creating for our day one single light and his reflection too supplies the night perhaps a thousand other worlds that lie remote from us and latent in the sky are lightened by his beams and kindly nursed of which our earthly dunghill is the worst now as all virtues keep the middle line yet somewhat more to one extreme incline such was her soul a boring avarice bounteous but almost bounteous to a vice had she given more it had profusion been and turned the excess of goodness into sin these virtues raised her fabric to the sky for that which is next heaven is charity but as high turrets for their airy steep require foundations in proportion deep and lofty cedars as far upward shoot as to the nether heavens they drive the root so low did her secure foundation lie she was not humble but humility scarcely she knew that she was great or fair or wise beyond what other women are 
or which is better new but never durst compare for to be conscious of what all admire and not be vain advances virtue higher but still she found or rather thought she found her own worth wanting others to abound ascribed above their due to every one unjust and scanty to herself alone such her devotion was as might give rules of speculation to disputing schools and teach us equally the scales to hold betwixt the two extremes of hot and cold that pious heat may moderately prevail and we be warmed but not be scorched with zeal business might shorten not disturb her prayer heaven had the best if not the greater share an active life long orisons forbids yet still she prayed for still she prayed by deeds her every day was sabbath only free from hours of prayer for hours of charity such as the jews from servile toil released where works of mercy were a part of rest such as blessed angels exercise above varied with sacred hymns and acts of love such sabbaths as that one she now enjoys in that perpetual one which she employs for such vicissitudes in heaven there are in praise alternate and alternate prayer all this she practised here that when she sprung amidst the choirs at the first sight she sung sung and was sung herself in angels lays for praising her they did her maker praise all officers of heaven so well she knew before she came that nothing there was new and she was so familiarly received as one returning not as one arrived muse down again precipitate thy flight for how can mortal eyes sustain immortal light but as the sun in water we can bear yet not the sun but his reflection there so let us view her here in what she was and take her image in this watery glass yet look not every lineament to see some will be cast in shades and some will be so lamely drawn you'll scarcely notice she for where such various virtues we recite tis like the milky way all over bright but sown so thick with stars tis undistinguished light her virtue not her virtues let us call for one heroic comprehends them all one as a constellation is but one though tis a train of stars that rolling on rise in their turn and in the zodiac run ever in motion now tis faith ascends now hope now charity that upward tends and downwards with diffusive good descends as in perfumes composed with art and cost tis hard to say what scent is uppermost nor this part musk or civet can we call or amber but a rich result of all so she was all a sweet whose every part in due proportion mixed proclaimed the maker's art no single virtue we could most commend whether the wife the mother or the friend for she was all in that supreme degree that as no one prevailed so all was she the several parts lay hidden in the piece the occasion but exerted that or this a wife as tender and as true withal as the first woman was before her fall made for the man of whom she was a part made to attract his eyes and keep his heart a second eve but by no crime accursed as beauteous not as brittle as the first had she been first still paradise had been and death had found no entrance by her sin so she not only had preserved from ill her sex and ours but lived their pattern still love and obedience to her lord she bore so much obeyed him but she loved him more not awed to duty by superior sway but taught by his indulgence to obey thus we love god as author of our good so subjects love just kings or so they should nor was it with ingratitude returned in equal fires the blissful couple burned one joy possessed them both and in one grief they mourned his passion still improved he loved so fast as if he feared each day would be her last too true a prophet to foresee the fate that should so soon divide their happy state when he to heaven entirely must restore that love that heart where he went halves before yet as the soul is all in every part so god and he might each have all her heart so had her children too for charity was not more fruitful or more kind than she each under other by degrees they grew a goodly perspective of distant view Anchises looked not with so pleased a face in numbering o'er his future roman race and marshalling the heroes of his name as in their order next to light they came nor cybele with half so kind an eye surveyed her sons and daughters of the sky proud shall i say of her immortal fruit as far as pride with heavenly minds may suit 
her pious love excelled to all she bore new objects only multiplied it more and as the chosen found the pearly grain as much as every vessel could contain as in the blissful vision each shall share as much of glory as his soul can bear so did she love and so dispense her care her eldest thus by consequence was best as longer cultivated than the rest the babe had all that infant care beguiles and early knew his mother in her smiles but when dilated organs let in day to the young soul and gave it room to play at his first aptness the maternal love those rudiments of reason did improve the tender age was pliant to command like wax it yielded to the forming hand true to the artificer the laboured mind with ease was pious generous just and kind soft for impression from the first prepared till virtue with long exercise grew hard with every act confirmed and made at last so durable as not to be effaced it turned to habit and from vices free goodness resolved into necessity thus fixed she virtue's image that's her own till the whole mother in the children shone for that was their perfection she was such they never could express her mind too much so unexhausted her perfections were that for more children she had more to spare for souls unborn whom her untimely death deprived of bodies and of mortal breath and could they take the impressions of her mind enough still left to sanctify her kind then wonder not to see this soul extend the bounds and seek some other self a friend as swelling seas to gentle rivers glide to seek repose and empty out the tide so this full soul in narrow limits pent unable to contain her sought a vent to issue out and in some friendly breast discharge her treasures and securely rest to unbosom all the secrets of her heart take good advice but better to impart for tis the bliss of friendship's holy state to mix their minds and to communicate though bodies cannot souls can penetrate fixed to her choice inviolably true and wisely choosing for she chose but few some she must have but in no one could find a tally fitted for so large a mind the souls of friends like kings in progress are still in their own though from the palace far thus her friend's heart her country dwelling was a sweet retirement to a coarser place where pomp and ceremonies entered not where greatness was shut out and business well forgot this is the imperfect draught but short as far as the true height and bigness of a star exceeds the measures of the astronomer she shines above we know but in what place how near the throne and heaven's imperial face by our weak optics is but vainly guessed distance and altitude conceal the rest though all these rare endowments of the mind were in a narrow space of life confined the figure was with full perfection crowned though not so large an orb as truly round as when in glory through the public place the spoils of conquered nations were to pass and but one day for triumph was allowed the consul was constrained his pomp to crowd and so the swift procession hurried on that all though not distinctly might be shown so in the straitened bounds of life confined she gave but glimpses of her glorious mind and multitudes of virtues passed along each pressing foremost in the mighty throng ambitious to be seen and then make room for greater multitudes that were to come yet unemployed no minutes slipped away moments were precious in so short a stay the haste of heaven to have her was so great that some were single acts though each complete but every act stood ready to repeat her fellow saints with busy care will look for her blessed name in fate's eternal book and pleased to be outdone with joy will see numberless virtues endless charity but more will wonder at so short an age to find a blank beyond the thirtieth page and with a pious fear begin to doubt the peace imperfect and the rest torn out but twas her saviour's time and could there be a copy near the original twas she as precious gums are not for lasting fire they but perfume the temple and expire so was she soon exhaled and vanished hence a short sweet odour of a vast expense she vanished we can scarcely say she died for but a now did heaven and earth divide she passed serenely with a single breath this moment perfect health the next was death one sigh did her eternal bliss assure so little penance needs when souls are almost pure as gentle dreams our waking thoughts pursue or one dream past we slide into a new 
so close they follow such wild order keep we think ourselves awake and are asleep so softly death succeeded life in her she did but dream of heaven and she was there no pains she suffered nor expired with noise her soul was whispered out with god's still voice as an old friend is beckoned to a feast and treated like a long familiar guest he took her as he found but found her so as one in hourly readiness to go e'en on that day in all her trim prepared as early notice she from heaven had heard and some descending courier from above had given her timely warning to remove or counselled her to dress the nuptial room for on that night the bridegroom was to come he kept his hour and found her where she lay clothed all in white the livery of the day scarce had she sinned in thought or word or act unless omissions were to pass for fact that hardly death a consequence could draw to make her liable to nature's law and that she died we only have to show the mortal part of her she left below the rest so smooth so suddenly she went looked like translation through the firmament or like the fiery car on the third errand sent o happy soul if thou canst view from high where thou art all intelligence all eye if looking up to god or down to us thou find'st that any way be pervious survey the ruins of thy house and see thy widowed and thy orphan family look on thy tender pledges left behind and if thou canst a vacant minute find from heavenly joys that interval afford to thy sad children and thy mourning lord see how they grieve mistaken in their love and shed a beam of comfort from above give them as much as mortal eyes can bear a transient view of thy full glories there that they with moderate sorrow may sustain and mollify their losses in thy gain or else divide the grief for such thou wert that should not all relations bear a part it were enough to break a single heart let this suffice nor thou great saint refuse this humble tribute of no vulgar muse who not by cares or wants or age depressed stems a wild deluge with a dauntless breast and dares to sing thy praises in a clime where vice triumphs and virtue is a crime where e'en to draw the picture of thy mind is satire on the most of humankind take it while yet tis praise before my rage unsafely just break loose on this bad age so bad that thou thyself hadst no defence from vice but barely by departing hence be what and where thou art to wish thy place were in the best presumption more than grace thy relics such thy works of mercy are have in this poem been my holy care as earth thy body keeps thy soul the sky so shall this verse preserve thy memory for thou shalt make it live because it sings of thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain